Hello friends, today we will discuss design of a crossover. In my last session, I told you design of a turnout. Now crossover is provided between two tracks and these tracks may be either parallel or may be diverging tracks. And today we will discuss the design of crossover which is provided between two parallel tracks. So these are basically two turnouts, one here and another here and then you have intermediate portion. Now this is the angle alpha may be same, may be different depending upon the number of turnout. There are three types of designs. One is when its intermediate portion is straight. Means this part, this is straight between two theoretical norms of crossings. There are two crossings and this is straight. This angle is alpha and design basically means to determine what is the overall length of the crossover from one tangent point to another tangent point that we call L. This is overall length of the crossover and what is this horizontal projection of straight length that is S. This is one tangent point and this is another tangent point that is the point switch. So the first design is when this intermediate portion is straight and therefore this angle and this angle will be same alpha. Alpha is cot alpha is given by this equation n is equal to cot alpha n is the number of crossing and this I told you that when you design a turnout in my last session then this length which is called the curve lead this is 2 g n and you should refer my last session to understand why it is 2 g n. Now this is also 2 g n for the second turnout. So this is 2 g n, this is 2 g n, g is the gauge, n is the number of crossing. Now remaining portion is s. So if you find out this s or l, let us take this. This is now a, b and let us say this point is c. This angle will be alpha. This is will be the gauge, a, b will be the gauge. Let us say this is F, this is B and E, E is here, this point is E and this point is H and distance between parallel tracks, center to center distance is let us say D, D is known, you have to put a crossover between these two parallel tracks. So, D E is equal to S, distance between horizontal projection of distance between two tracks S, S is equal to D E and D because this is straight, this point, this line is straight, this track is straight and therefore you can consider this triangle C E D. So in triangle C E D, this D E will be equal to C D cot alpha. Now this C D, C D you can find out from this A D. A D, C D is A D minus A C. And what is A D? A D is the clear distance between two tracks. This will be D minus gauge. Because half the gauge, half of the gauge here. So A D is D minus G minus AC. AC again you can use this triangle. That will be G sec alpha. G sec alpha. This DE is CD cot alpha and CD is D minus G minus G sec alpha. So S will be equal to 
d minus g minus g sec alpha into cot alpha. So, if you simplify that, s will be d minus g into n minus g into square root of 1 plus n square. Why it is so? Because sec alpha is square root of 1 plus 10 square alpha. 10 square you can write down 1 by cot alpha. Cot alpha is n and therefore it will be square root of 1 plus n square upon n. Substitute that into that equation you get value of s. The overall length of the crossover L, L will be S plus 4 G N and therefore it will be D minus G into N minus G square root of 1 plus N square plus 4 G N. Now you know the number of crossing N, you know the gauge, you know the distance between two parallel tracks, you can find out what is S and what is L. This is a design. The second type of crossover could be when intermediate portion is not straight but it is curved. What does it mean? When crossing angles are same but this portion between two parallel tracks or from TNC to TNC is curved. So, it will be a reverse curve, reverse curve with the same radius on both sides. So, in this case when the intermediate portion is curved but the crossing angles are equal, same alpha, alpha, then there will be two curves of same radius on either side. It is a reverse curve having the same radius and D is the distance between two parallel tracks. This is the overall length L of the crossover. This distance remains same that is 2GN that is curve lead. This distance is also same that is 2GN as earlier. So again the point is to find out this distance S. Let us name them that this point is A, B, C, D, E and let us say O dash that is the center of this curve and this is the center of this curve, this side curve O. So in this triangle O, O dash A, O, O dash A you have O, O dash square is equal to O dash E A plus O A square. Now O A is L that is what to be determined overall length of the crossover and O O dash if you consider this R this is also R so O O dash will be from here to here this will be twice of R minus gauge. So this will be 2 R minus G. Now what is this A O dash? Now see here A O dash can be written as A B plus B E plus E O dash and because both radii are same and therefore A B will be equal to E O dash right and this is D plus G. So B E is D plus G. A B and E O dash they are same and what is A B for finding, finding out A B you come here this is the point you want this distance take R total from this point to this point R minus this distance and this distance is D plus G. So this will be equal to R minus D minus G R minus D plus G that is this distance A B same will be this distance R minus D minus G. So this will be 
total distance a o dash will be sum of these three 2 r minus d minus g. So, this will be a o dash will be 2 r minus d minus g plus l square. Now, if you simplify this, you will get L is equal to square root of D into 4R minus 2G minus D. That is the overall length of the crossover. And S as usual overall length minus 2GN minus 2GN that is 4G. So, S will be L minus 4 G N and L is given by this equation. So, that is how you design a crossover between two parallel tracks when the intermediate portion is curved but crossing angles are equal. Third case could be when this turnout is different from this turnout and in that case crossing angle will not be equal. So, third case could be that the crossover between two parallel tracks with intermediate portion curved but crossing angles not equal. So, this will be, it will be in the same manner, this will be alpha 1 and this will be alpha 2. So, you have now n1 and n2 and n1 and n2 n1 will be called alpha 1 and n2 will be called alpha 2. And let us say this radius is r1 and this radius is r2. They are not same. This is r1, right? So, this o o dash now, o o dash now will be r1 plus r2 minus g. So, instead of 2r minus g, it is now r1 plus r2 minus g. And similarly, this one, this distance a o. Now, a b, a b will be r1 minus d minus g, a b will be r1 minus d minus g, b e remains same, that is your distance plus gauge, this will be r2 minus d minus g, when you take this distance, yeah, not same now, because there is no symmetry of the curve. And if you put in this equation, these values in this equation, then you get L will be rather than 4R. Now, it will be D into 2R1 plus 2R2 minus 2G minus D. This will be the value of L, overall length of the crossover. And S will be this overall length minus is not now 4G1, it will be 2GN1 this side and 2GN2 this side. So, it will be minus 2GN1 minus 2GN2. That is how you design the crossover between two parallel tracks. It may be intermediate portion may be straight, it may be curved, curved may be with same crossing angle or maybe different crossing angle. Now, just to illustrate it further, let me just take one small example. How do we determine these parameters of a crossover? An example is like this. A curved crossover with equal number of 1 in 12 is laid between two broad gauge parallel tracks placed at 5 meter center to center. The heel divergence for a 1 in 12 crossing is 133 millimeter. Calculate all design elements of the crossover. Now, here n is 12, g is 1.676 meter, d is given as 133 millimeter, capital D is 5 meter, that is center to center distance. Now, you have to calculate all parameters of crossover. Now, when you say all parameters, it basically means everything for the design of 
turn out also including radius. So, first let us calculate what is the curve lead CL. CL is 2 G N and because same both have the same angle alpha alpha. So, it will be both same for both tracks and this is 2 into 1.676 into 12 this is 40.22 meter this is 40.22 meter this is 40.22 meter r radius of the curve if you recall my first session i told you in case of design of a turnout r is given by this equation 1.5 g plus 2 g n square this equation is given in the last session and that is 1.5 into 1.676 plus 2 into 1.676 into n is 12 so 144 and this will be 485 meter so radius both radius are same radius is 485 meter now third parameter is switch lead switch lead SL. Now, this also we discussed in our last session on design of turnout that switch lead is square root of 2 R D. Now, D here is heel divergence, R is radius, radius is 485, D is 0 0.133 meter, and therefore this will be 11.36 meter. Now, these are the parameters of turnout R switch lead and curve lead. For S, S is given by this equation L minus 4 G N, L is given by this equation D into 4 R minus 2 G minus D. You know R 485 G 1.676 D 5 meter, and therefore you can substitute these values to get to get L, L is a square root of 5 into 4 into 485 minus 2 into 1.676 minus 5 meter and this is equal to 98.28 meter. That is the overall length of the crossover. And this S, S will be L minus 4 G N, L minus 4 G N and therefore the horizontal projection of intermediate portion will be L that is 98.28 minus 4 into 1.676 into 12 and this will be 17.83 meter. This projection is small projection is 17.8 meter. This overall length of the crossover is 98.28 meter. This is 40.22. Radius is 485. These are all elements of the crossover. You can lay it. So that is how we design a crossover. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestions comment in the comment box.